Oh, he's waiting in the other window. Okay. Light the candle. Wake up. All right. Hopefully I didn't blink. Ah, uh, yes. And I can't see because I don't have my glasses. Where did I leave them? Hang on. I think I'm on. All right. I can't hear it as good back here. We are actually on Plan C, and I will explain that to you more when we get done with our first hymn. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, God is Here. It's a good thing he's here. Here as we, your people, meet to all praise and prayer. May we find in fuller measure what as in the All our vast skills and arts wait the coming of the Spirit and to open minds and hearts. Here are symbols to remind us of our love, a long need of grace. Here our table, front and pulpit. Here the cross and central place. Here in honesty of preaching. Here in silence as in speech. Here in noon, sun renewal. God the Spirit comes to each. Here our children find a welcome in the shepherd's flock and fold. Here as bread and wine are taken, Christ sustains us as a here the servants of the servant seek and worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Lord of all, of church and kingdom, in an age of change and doubt, keep us faithful to the gospel, 
Help us work your purpose out here in this day's dedication. Oh, we have to give, receive. We who cannot live without you, we adore you, we believe. Welcome to this service. That's yours for in a little bit. And good morning. I'm Pastor Sue Sarah. I'm the called pastor here to this congregation. And we welcome Bishop Kevin Jones today to bring us on this final day of worship. He will provide the sermon for us in just a little bit. I hope that you all will receive a bulletin as soon as they get here. My brain evidently was somewhere else, and they were at home yet a while ago. So my daughter is bringing them as fast as she can get them here. When that happens, you'll all get one. In the meantime, we're just going to fly by the seat of our pants and hope that everything works out. And so I just have a couple of announcements that I wanted to make sure that you all knew. I'll remind you later, but we are serving a light luncheon afterwards, and you can just go downstairs for that. Although, if you prefer and are a dedicated Swiss steak dinner person, the IC Church in North Washington is having the Swiss steak dinner that they always have every year. Also today, they'll be serving from 11 till 1, so you might have plenty of time to go downstairs and have some refreshments and then drive on back out that direction. Make sure you realize the road is not very good. You have to do the little detour thing to get there. But... Anyway, if you'd like to go, you may do that as well. For all of the rest of you, um, to next week begins regular services, and wherever we have all decided to go, I will be still serving Emmanuel, Crane Creek Church, so I'll be there, and services will continue as per normal. Um, we appreciate you all attending this service, and for the first part, I'm just going to have you be seated because Richard wants to say something, and maybe he can break the, the, the bad spell that we have here going on with all of this craziness with my bulletins. Good morning. Oh. you got to hang on to that or they can't hear you. Be you do. Okay. Try. There's plenty of cord. You got it. <laughs> Okay. I'll even give you this part. You can have the whole works. Yeah. 137 years. We're going to be here a while to take care of that. But I brought, I shouldn't say I brought, I stole this from the table downstairs. And I'm sure there's going to be some retribution for that. Yeah. Good. I do mean on. I do plan on putting it back on the table. It's a that. Okay, we'll borrow it. What do we have in front of me is a Diamond Jubilee um, book from 19, 1887 to 1962, and in it are information on the baptisms, the confirmations. And the marriages that were taking place in those years of 87 to 62. And it's my thoughts are just to bring to the forefront everyone that's seated here is to let you know how far back this has gone. And the, and the members and the names of the people the last names I will, I will go with for sure. How far back we still have members here or members in attendance that their families go back that long. Um, to give you examples, and, and of course I did, did read some of them through, just uh, information, but some of the names that are mentioned, of course, 
are the Schultzes, the Mosmans, the Lukerts, the Johans, the Bills, the Slazings, and Radkeys, Homeyers, and Reckners. I made a mistake. I told a friend of mine that his last name was in the Lutheran Church, and I mistook that. It's Reckner, not Recker. I apologize for that. Lying also. <laughs> Deep trouble. Deep trouble. But that's, it's a very interesting book that, that came to light when we were cleaning out the church, basically. This insert that I'm going to read from the Zion Council Minutes dates back to 1931. And it was brought to light by Pastor Sue. She was the first one in English. First, first one in English, yes. And uh, it is it is a little difficult for me to read even in English because of the type of writing that it is. So you have to bear with me. It's cursive. It's cursive, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I say it dates back to February 2nd, 1931. And as it reads, at their last council meeting of the congregation, Adolf Schlesing, for many years a member of Zion Lutheran Church, asked that the congregation dismiss its pastor. Be it a concern, he did not like him, as the congregation could not recognize the reasons he gave as sufficient and refused to grant his request. He declared his withdrawal, he declared his withdrawal from the, from the membership. Neither under these circumstances can a peaceful release is possible to do entirely on their sentiment of his heart, whether it be a peaceful or a hostile hour. She, she showed this to me and I read it, and unbeknownst to her, this was my great-grandfather and our great-grandfather, which is the reason I shared it for you. And of course, there's lots of other things in the minutes that are more positive than that. <laughs> for that, so. um, the other thing is with the closing of the church. This is a building. I, I can't continue. Sorry. Thank you. I'll say that for you later. Well, it was the only reason that I found that and started to read it was because it was the first one in English. So that was the one that I could actually read. And I don't know why, but maybe it's because I was a hygienist for 40 years. I can read pretty good scrawl. <clears throat> Doctors and dentists, you know, don't write very well. So um, I, was, I was able to decipher most of it. And it does say that eventually he probably changed his mind and did not leave the membership of the church especially since we found his name later in different things. So, But he was pretty perturbed about something, who knows what. And um, sometimes it does feel that way as a pastor that we're kind of under a microscope. Um, people are always telling us that we're doing this wrong and this wrong and that wrong and that wrong. And the cool thing about this particular congregation and also the one that I serve in out in the country is that as they walked with me through my schooling to become ordained, um, they have told me many times how many, how many times they appreciate me. And yeah, you messed up a little. I usually went to them and said, you know, I really messed up. I really did a bad thing right there. And it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll just, yeah, it's already gone. No big deal. And, um, that it's, it's the love that I have for the people here that they have given back to me as well during that time. Um, 
that makes this especially hard for me to, to be here to close the, the building. Um, but um, either way, um, I'm sure that some of you were able to read the, the, um, the article in the newspaper. And um, um, I think that Bob did a good job writing down pretty much all my thoughts. I didn't realize he was writing that many notes. It didn't seem like he was writing that much, but he must have remembered a few things that I said because we are going to try to make this a happy occasion. We are resurrection people. We believe the resurrection. And so it's a building, like Richard was starting to say. It's a building, people. You are the church. And wherever you go, God is going with you. You, you are the church. Anyway, back to, the, back to where we're supposed to be, if you had a bulletin to know. We were going to do the confession and forgiveness, and you should be able to find that on page 94 in your hymnals. Hopefully you all have enough that you can find one, and if you can't, there's some more up here in the front in these bare sections. Spread them out so that everybody gets a hymnal if you can't find one to, to read. Please stand. We're actually on page 95. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. You may remain standing, kneel if you'd like, or sit down, whichever you prefer. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We were going to have a baptism. And the little one that was to be baptized was had stomach flu all night long, so she's not here. But as we're still going to have the kids come up so that they can have part of the service too. That's the one that goes for the recording. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on today. Kids, 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 come on up. There you go. I knew there was some of you out there. Hi. How are you? Good. We might have to have some of you slide up on the top step even. How about that? Yep, you guys already did that. Now slide on down and let these other guys sit down somewhere. Come on. You can sit down over here. And there's a couple rooms over here. No, you all want to be shy and sit on that side? Okay, that works. So this is, do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? No. Play-Doh. Do you have some that are this size or are yours bigger? Here. Bigger? You like the big hunks, huh? Well, this is one of the small ones that we use in our church bag for our grandkids. So inside there, in fact, there's only a little bit left. Does that happen to yours too? Does yours get smaller and smaller as you use it? Seems to not ever get back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And what happens then when you finally get done using all the good Play-Doh because it got hard, you had to throw it away. What happens to this thing? Throw we throw it away. How come? What's in there now? Nothing. Nothing. 
It's just like the tomb on Easter morning. It was empty, wasn't it? Yeah, because Jesus rose up from the dead. And there he was. The, there was nothing left in the tomb. But we didn't throw the tomb away, did we? No. no. Right. So we always have to remember that the empty canister is still an important thing. Right? Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about baptism, too. Because we were supposed to have somebody here to be baptized. So, when you get baptized, Cain, do you remember being baptized? Do you remember getting baptized here? No? You know, you ha it happened. I did. I baptized you right here. Right here in this very spot. Now, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 13 of you. Hmm. I might have enough water. Can you all line up so you can all put a little bit of water in here? Whoopsie. There goes the plate. Good thing it's sturdy. Okay. We're just going to pour a little bit in. There you go. Good. Next. I'll help you. Whoop. That's enough. It helps if you're not short, I think. Then you can see. Pour a little bit in. Good. Okay, your turn. Good. You ever done that before? You ever poured water in there? No? You haven't poured water in there yet either, have you? No. How about you? Have you poured water in a basin? No? Not this kind anyway, right? How are you? Good. I haven't seen you for a while. I usually see you riding down the street on your bicycle. There you go. Good. Fabulous. And you're getting tall. My goodness. All you guys that I don't see very often. And look at you. Oh my goodness. You're going to be taller than me someday, aren't you? Last one. Yep. We're going to put just a little bit in there. There you go. Now, who can tell me what we do with this water if you're getting baptized? You remember? What do we do with it? Do we throw it on them? No. What do we do? Who do we put it on? Whoever's being baptized, right? On your head? How many times? Who remembers? Three times. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right? Yep, I'm making a mess. I forgot to bring a towel. Oh, well. And all of that is really, really fun and cool because we know that God is with us all the time because of the sign of the cross that you have on your forehead. Because when you were baptized, you got that sign of the cross on your head. Pretty cool, huh? And so we can all remember our baptism today. When you come up for communion in a little while, you can... Watch your finger or your thumb, whichever one it is you like. I always like to use the thumb, but you can use your finger and trace over that sign of the cross that's on your head to remind you that you are a child of God and God is always with you. All right, guys. Now we got to figure out how to not fight over all the suckers. You think you can do this in a somewhat easy way? As you go back to your seats, how about if I leave them right here, and you can have a sheet of a sheet of paper. Oh, thank you. We'll want mop up the sop here. There. So you can have a bulletin if you want one, so you can color while you're there, and then take a take a sucker and go back to your seat. Yeah, you got to peel them off. They're hard to get loose, aren't they? There you go. In fact. Piper, will you just stand here and do that for me? Will you just open them up and let people get, get one as they go by? Tatum, can you do the others? There you go. Make sure everybody gets one or the other. There you go. Good job. We'll leave that right there, and you can open them up and give them to what, the one they want. Okay? Can you do that for us? Yeah, good. And don't forget your sucker. You might need to have a sugar, sugar take. That's a cool colored shirt. Yeah. Might need that one for during green season. There we go. 
got kind of wet. So as we're remembering our, oops, I forgot I was going to have you all sing. Can you come back up really quick? <laughs> Just turn around and look that way. You don't have to come up on the steps. Just go right down there, wherever you're at. Just turn around and stand down. You all know Jesus loves me, right? Okay, Lindsay's going to play Jesus loves me so that we can all sing, okay? Are you ready? All right. Oh, we got to move down a little. Make some room. They're all crowded in down there. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good job. Yay. I even saw you all singing. That was fabulous. Thanks, kids. You did a good job leading the congregation. See, we might have some future pastors in those gr in that group. You just never know. All righty. We're going to continue on. I don't see Sarah coming in the door yet. We begin where we, be we continue on with setting three on page 138. Please stand. 138. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Turn the page. <coughs> A victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our riches, wisdom, and strength, and all who blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might, 
be to God and the Lamb forever. of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Alleluia. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, you have promised through your Son to be with your church forever. We give you thanks for those who founded this community of believers and for the signs of your presence in this congregation throughout its life. As this congregation, Zion Lutheran Church, concludes its time together in this place, grant that we may ever follow in the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Today... We gather for the last time in this place as the people of Zion Lutheran Church. We give thanks for the ministry that has happened in this congregation and for the people who have been fed and nurtured in the Christian faith here. Even as we mark the end of an era in this place, we acknowledge how we are all participants in God's mission that continues beyond this day and beyond these walls. There are a few letters from previous pastors and member. There's actually one that who was a member who have written to you today. They are not able to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to share some words with you. I'm Ronnie Hildahl, who shared ministry among you when I was a member of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I'm reminded of Paul's words to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. With all of the roller coaster of emotions that are present in this period of closure and grieving, we are to be mindful to give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks for the first families that worshipped and formed this congregation. Give thanks for the many seeds of faith that were planted in sermons, Bible studies, Sunday school classes, confirmation classes, and vacation Bible school. Give thanks for the many mission opportunities to serve neighbors around the world and down the street. Give thanks for the many milestones in faith that happened in love in the lives of those who are gathered here. Having grown up at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, I've had many opportunities to share the life in the life of Zion. Tim Orvis and I shared confirmation classes with Tracy Arian and Jim Lechtenberg. With Norma Ferkins at the piano, I sang Rise Again quite a few times during Good Friday services. Before and while I was attending ceremony se seminar, seminary, I've had the opportunity of assisting or leading worship services and even preached a few sermons here. I've always been appreciative for the love and care and support and especially the financial gifts from Zion as I was in seminary. I've served four congregations as a pastor, and now I've been a chaplain for the past 14 years, currently serving in a school and residential setting for children with disabilities and complex medical issues in Jamestown, North Dakota. That's why he's not able to be here today. It would have been a long drive. Thank you for the many ways for your congregation that your congregation has supported me as a brother in Christ. So give thanks and may God's peace be with each of you as you are forever mindful of your identity as a beloved child of God wherever your journey of faith will lead you. This one's from Pine, Arizona. So some of you may figure out where that's coming from. Pastor Lance Kittleson. 
Although today is a day of deep sadness, I have been meditating more on the sense of gratitude for the ministry and people of Zion over its many decades. Zion and Alta Vista were places of great comfort and joy for Gail and I and our young family as we returned from Africa as beat up and hurting missionaries. Zion and Emmanuel took us in, gave us a home and fellowship and taught us this young pastor, taught this young pastor how to be a real minister in real life, rural life. In my tenure at Zion and Emmanuel almost over 40 years ago, it was the unstated job of many small rural congregations to train the young pastors whom they knew would move on to larger parishes in time. Zion embraced its role with grace, dignity, and limited chewing outs. In the pastors, many miscues, mistakes, and unorthodox ways. It was the 80s farm crisis with all the pain that and a changing economy brought to Alta Vista and the farm economy. A time of population shift as farms became larger and farmers became fewer, leaving many in search of employment when there was often little to be had. A time of closing like Sara Lee Plant and shuttering of the school district's Alta Vista attendance center. Blow after blow came, and while staggering, Zion and its people of grace and faith worshipped, proclaimed the gospel, loved one another, and continued to be of support to all the community of Alta Vista. The church jointly worshipped with our brothers and sisters of St. Bernard's on Thanksgiving Eve, took the first of several youth backpacking trips to Montana, and much of congregation went to Strawberry Point for an annual winter all-church retreat at Iwaloo. A lift was added to the narthex and gathering area in less than a year. The loan was paid off and publicly burned during the public or the church picnic in the city park. Some of you probably remember that. As in any human institution, even with a divine calling, life was not always rosy. But the difficulties were navigated with grace and forgiveness, never altering Jesus' mission to be a light in the world. For the sake of their son, their Savior and Lord, Zion, has always been that and more. So again, despite the sadness of this day, I truly give thanks for all the faithful witnesses, decade after decade, at Zion Lutheran Church. May its memory and witness give joy and peace throughout our lives and our continued journey to the throne of God and our risen Savior, Christ Jesus. Pastor Lance um, served here from 1981 to 1985. I have to agree that he was probably the one then that helped you out with the, with the uh, not so much chewing out thing for those of us who were learning along the way. <clears throat> Dear members of Zion, greetings from your por former pastor and secretary, Pastor Peter and Pat Peterson. We served at Zion from 1996 to 2004. We had many good memories of the people in our time in Alta Vista. We enjoyed having the pipe organ and the choir, confirming over more than 50 youth as well as special Lenten and combined services with Emmanuel and participating in Thanksgiving services with the priests and members of St. Bernard's. We wish we could attend your closing service, but must decline because of health reasons. We know the closing of Zion is hard, but we know you also have good memories of your worship there in God's house and hope that you each will find a new church home. You're, you are in our thoughts and our prayers. God bless and keep you in his love. Sincerely, Pastor Peter and Pat Peterson. I can't remember the dates that he, oh, 96 to 2004. He's living in Wisconsin at this time. And the last one is from Pastor Matt Voyer. To the saints of Zion Lutheran Church in Alta Vista. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may struggle to hear those words on this second Sunday of Easter 2024 as you gather for your last ever worship as a congregation. I was hopeful to be with you in person today, but Toby's musical makes it impossible. Know that my prayers are with you and the prayers of Trinity Lutheran Church in Delta, Ohio are also with you. My ministry that began with you all has brought 
Heather, Toby, and me to four communities and four different states. Each one has left a mark on my heart and my pastoral identity. Thank you for taking a chance on a fresh from seminary, still wet behind the ears kid from Peaks Island, Maine, 16 years ago. For it was in my 20 months with you that I started becoming the leader and pastor that I am today. And I have you all to thank for that. I am one of God knows how many people who have been touched in, by the ministry of Zion Lutheran Church. You would do well to remember that as you gather this day, that although the building is no longer yours, and that Zion Lutheran will no longer be an active organized congregation of Lutherans, it still lives on in the lives and the faith of those heard the gospel proclaimed among you, was nourished at the Lord's table with you, and served the gospel of Jesus Christ through your ministries. It may seem counterintuitive to gather for your service of holy closure during the normally celebratory season of Easter, but maybe it's a perfect time to take an in inevitable step. For this season is devoted to the joy of resurrection. It is a season where we remember again and again that for God, death and demise is never final. It is a great time to remember that God will continue to work in and through those who once called Zion Lutheran Church their church home. Again, I am thankful to have been a part of the history and ministry of Zion Lutheran Church, even if for a very short time. We will continue to pray for each and every one of you as you discern to what and where Jesus is calling you now. In the love and hope of our crucified and risen Lord, Pastor Matt Voyer. And I'm sure you all remember him too. And it looks like Sarah got here. There you are. Oh, you've even got to sit in the front pew. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you didn't get a speeding ticket. All right, cool. Who needs a bulletin? So we're, you'll have to find your spot. We're up to the place where the hymn, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised, is going to be sung, and you may remain seated to do so. Number 810. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Remain forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if you are by my side. Nor wander from the pathway If you will be my guide Oh, let me feel you near me The world is ever near I see the sights that dazzle The tempting sounds I hear my foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus can draw near to shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear you speak me in accents clear and still. Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Now speak to reassure me, to hasten or control. Now speak and make me listen, O guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, you have promised 
to all who follow you, that where you are in glory, your servants shall be too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. We'll now have our readings. Richard and Michelle. Put your microphone under there, and then you won't have to worry about where it's at. Okay. There you go. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, 15 through 19. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters? Who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior? They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is 118, 1 through 2, 14 through 24. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, say his steadfast love endures, endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are Glad songs of victory, victory the tents, tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord shall live. And recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 through 18. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Just get up there. 
Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, in the spirit of our love and life. Amen. Uh, just prior to the service, um, someone came up to me and said, are you going to do a short sermon or a long sermon today? And I said, which do you prefer? And uh, she said, short. Um, so I'll try. I'll try to keep it short. Um, uh, the year I was born, my grandparents bought a lot on a small lake outside of Farwell, Michigan. And if you know People from Michigan, we do the Michigan map, the mitten. Farwell is like right in the middle of the state. Um, and uh, the next year, they built a cabin there, uh, a little two-bedroom, three-quarter bath with kind of a, a kitchen, living, open area, and then a covered front porch that, that faced the lake. And um, every summer, uh, my family would go up for a week, but the real treat was always... Uh, a couple times a summer, Grandma and Grandpa, on their way up to the cabin, uh, which is about two hours from where they lived, would stop and pick up me and one of my brothers. They, I have three brothers, so they'd pick up two of us at a time, and we would get to go with them for the weekend. Um, and we got to do magical things like lay on the hide bed and watch the Carol Burnett show until we fell asleep, right? Um, but they also let us do kind of anything we wanted while we were there. We could take out the rowboat. We could go fishing. We could play in the sand. If it was raining, we'd play Yahtzee with my grandmother, um, visit. We would color. We would just sometimes sit on the front porch if it was raining and watch the rain ripple on the lake. It was an amazing place. And it was one of those places where uh, throughout growing up and even into my adult life, Every time you stepped into that place, they were excited to see me, right? My grandma would go, oh, look who's here. And they would get up. And it wasn't just me. It was like everybody that walked into that house, into that cabin, they were excited that you were there and they made you feel at home and welcome and loved. Didn't matter who you were. I tell people that we probably are the only family in the world that has pictures in our family album of the Jehovah's Witness that came to visit my grandmother regularly. I kid you not. And I would go in college and as an adult and I would visit her and I would see these stacks of um, uh, uh, the Watchtower magazine that they handed out. And I'd say, Graham, you don't have to sit and listen to them. And she's like, he's a really nice guy. And here's the deal. I know I'm never going to become a Jehovah's Witness, and as long as he's talking to me and giving me his stuff, he's not handing it to someone who might become a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> okay, okay. There's some wisdom there, right? <laughs> but literally, she would take a picture of them, and, and he's in the family album. 
Um, but but it, it was it was one of those places that even as an adult, um, just it was a lovely place to go. You felt cared for, welcomed. You, you visited with family. You, you you learned about family and what it meant to be in our family. Um, it was just it was just one you know one of those special special places. When I was around forty. Um, they had retired to their cabin um, and lived there for a couple decades in retirement. But uh, eventually age and health caught up to them, like it tends to do with all of us. And um, they had to move into an assisted living place. And the family talked long and hard about how can we keep the cabin? How can we keep the cabin? But uh, my mom and all of my brothers, um, we lived out of state. We had moved away from Michigan. Um, and the closest one was eight and a half hours away. My uncle and his kids, um, they were closer, but my cousins were just at that point where they were starting out with family and, and buying their own house. They, they weren't able to, to kind of pitch in and be a part of it. And, and they certainly didn't have time to take care of it. So we had to make the hard choice to let go of the cat that had been in the family for 40 years had been a special place for everybody for that long. And, and we had to sell it and we sold it and, and hoped that whoever bought it would be blessed and that their family would find the same kind of joy and, and fun and uh, just relaxation that we had found in that place. Fast forward about 18 years, two years ago, actually it was um, my uh, wife and I, uh, stopped and visited her parents in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and then we were uh, heading up to the Straits of Mackinac for some vacation time, which made us drive right past uh, where the cabin was. And uh, we were within about 10 miles, and so I asked my wife, do you mind if we just drive by and look? And she said, no, that's fine. And so I took that old drive that I had taken so many times as a kid, um, and we pulled in to the lake, and it, it had changed. Um, where there had been some empty lots or tiny cabins, there were now some big houses on the lake. Um, and we drove around what used to be a gravel road was now paved, and we turned uh, left onto Cricket Lane down into the cul-de-sac, and there it was. Same general shape, but it had always been moss green when we had it. It was now red. So that I had to catch my breath a little bit. But there out by the front, uh, by the street, was the old rowboat that my brothers and I had um, rowed around that lake a thousand times. Um, when I was in college, it had gotten a, a rust hole big enough that my grandpa pulled it up by the road, tipped it on the side, and turned it into a planter um, for uh, uh, lilies. Um, and, and it was still there and still acting like the planter 20 years later. And I was like, oh, that's exciting. And so we turned around in the cul-de-sac and we pulled up and I got out of the car and I took a couple pictures. And my wife said, are you going to walk around? And I was like, that would be creepy, right? <laughs> uh, and, and the neighbor across the street had noticed me and he had come out and was pretending to do lawn work while he was keeping an eye on me. I was like, no, I don't think I want to go walk around. And I, I was afraid, though, more than anything, that someone might come out and invite me in, right? Because it wasn't going to be the same place of what I remembered. Um, in a way, just there closed up, it was a tomb, and it held all of these really special and precious memories for me. And I was afraid that if I walked in, they would get out, right? Um, and, and that it would be a different decor. It would be different furniture. It, would, it had belonged to at least one other family. And I was like, man, I do not want to go in there. So we sat in the car for a few minutes, and um, we drove. We left. Um, last week, two weeks ago, when Sue sent me the lessons uh, for today to start getting ready. Um, that picture of the cabin was sitting on my computer. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what's going on, right? Um, that's what makes today hard. Is I, I know we want to say this is just a building. It's not just a building, right? This is a vessel. 
uh, that has that holds sacred and holy memories and moments for families for generations. Sometimes for families that were here for a short time and left, but this is the place, right? This is the place that there were weddings and baptisms and communions and potlucks, right? Until you exploded from eating. Um, this was the place where there were funerals and you could come and someone would go, Hey, you're here. Look, you're here. Welcome. It's good to see you, right? This was the place that you knew that you could come and be yourself. That you could come and you could say out loud, I screwed up. I've, you know, in the confession and forgiveness regularly, I screwed up. I've messed up. And someone would say to you, it's okay. You're still part of the family. You're still a beloved child of God, right? It's a place where you came to eat not only potlucks, but to be fed by the word of God, to be fed by the bread and wine of communion, to be in the presence of God and to know I'm accepted, I'm loved. This is who we are. That's what makes it hard today. In the gospel lesson, the women were going to the tomb to let go one last time, right? They had all of these hopes and these memories and these times being with Jesus where he made them feel loved and feeling alive and that there was a purpose and that something was going to happen. And then the authorities took and killed him kind of before they thought he would did, was going to be able to do what he was going to do. And now he was dead. And they had let go of some of those hopes and dreams. And here they were on that Sunday morning going to let go one last time to do the final preparations so that they could roll the stone in front of the tomb one more time and seal all of those memories and all of those things away. And when they got there, they found something different than what they were expecting. They found the tomb already opened up and someone inside inviting them to come in and say, look, this isn't what you were expecting. This isn't what you thought it was. This isn't just a place of death. It's a place of new life. And it's in those moments when we let go, right? And, and sometimes we have to let go more than once. Sometimes we have to keep letting go and keep letting go and keep letting go again and again. And it becomes a little easier. And we're not caring quite as much every time, but we let go. But when we let go, we also open our hands to be able to receive that new life and that new gift of whatever it might be. When we let go of the cabin, I didn't realize it, but what I let go of in retrospect was a lot of stress and worry about how do I take care of a house that's 10 hours away, you know, three states away, um, and, and realizing that, that I wouldn't have been free to devote time to my family and my congregations and, and ministry if I had had to worry about a cabin that I was hanging on to that wasn't going to be what it had always been for me. Letting go is hard, hard work. So I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the congregation here at Zion for doing the hard, hard work of letting go, of saying it's time for us to let go. And, and that's really hard for, for the leaders, for all of you and your willingness to do that. Um, for Pastor Sue and all the work that she has done um, in this, because this is what I can promise you, that pastors don't go to seminary thinking that we're going to close congregations. We don't. We go to seminary to increase and grow ministry and to do more ministry, not to complete it. And, and I think that can be a helpful way to think about it, too. This isn't a closure. It's a completion. It, it, it's a, it's a 
to say it's time to, to end this particular expression of ministry in this place and in this way. That doesn't mean that ministry ends. That doesn't mean that God goes away. That doesn't mean that Jesus abandons us. But it opens us to some new ways and some new things that we might not even be imagining at this point. So thank you. Thank you for doing that hard work of letting go, being open to whatever might come, whatever might be. And we pray that the congregation that is going to buy this building, that they'll be blessed with some of the same kinds of new life and um, blessings and, and goodness that Jesus has to offer, even though it'll not be Lutheran, it'll be very different here. And I would imagine that six months from now, stepping in here would feel really weird again. Mm. But we can pray that God continue to bless the people that use this vessel of holiness, of God's presence, of those holy moments where we're fed and we find ourselves loved and known that God is with us. Friends, may you know that wherever you go from here, that you go and God goes with you. In fact, Jesus is out in front already preparing a place for you, right? And I don't just mean heaven. I mean actually preparing a place for you to live out your faith and your love in Jesus Christ, right? And that there's nothing that can separate us from that love. So I want you to know, as I said before when I've been here and preached, I want you to know deep in your bones and deep in your hearts that there's nothing that you can do to separate yourself from the love of God in Christ Jesus. There's nothing you can say, nothing you can do, nothing you've ever said or done before or can that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. There's nothing about who you are or how you understand yourself to be in this world that can drive a wedge between you and the love that God has for you in Christ Jesus. And there's nothing that anybody else can ever say or do to you or has said about you that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. There's no height, nor depth, nor powers, nor principalities, nor anything else in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not even death itself. We celebrate on Easter, we celebrate every Sunday, which is a little Easter, that truth that not even death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is The Church's One Foundation. We join together in singing. <clears throat> Is Jesus Christ the Lord? She is His creation, our water and the word. From heaven He came and sought her to be His holy bride. With His own blood He bought her. And for her life he died. He left from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blessed. She presses with every grace and doom. Oh, with a scornful wonder, this world sees her oppressed. By schisms rent asunder, by her. 
Pharisees distressed, yet since their watch are keeping, their cry goes up along, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Through toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the free in one, and missed that sweet communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, blessed heavenly chorus, Lord, save us by your grace, that we might saints be they see you face to face. At the dedication of a church building, it is customary to ask God's blessings on the places of the word and sacraments. Today, we return to these symbols of God's grace in our lives. Because proclaiming the word and, and celebrating the sacraments are the heart of a congregation's ministry. We give thanks for the ways that God has nurtured this congregation throughout the years and has led us to serve others in Christ's name. Here at the place of the word. Let us pray. O God, your mighty word at the dawn of creation breathed life into the earth and all of its inhabitants. By the gift of your incarnate word in Jesus, you brought good news of life and salvation to all humankind. Through your word proclaimed in worship here, this congregation has been challenged and healed. Let your voice, which is sounded in this place, Echo in our lives as we proclaim your message of peace into the places you will send us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Here, at the place of baptism. Let us pray. O oh God, through the flood in the time of Noah and through the waters of the Red Sea, you saved your people of old. Through the waters of baptism in this place, your people have been born to new life and have been commissioned for service in Christ's name. May all the baptized continue to give witness to your saving grace throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Here, at the place of the meal, let us pray. O oh God, through manna on a wilderness journey and through loaves of bread multiplied on a hillside, you fed people who needed sustenance for their bodies and souls. May all who have been nourished here with the body and blood of Christ give themselves away as food for the hungry. May all who have feasted here welcome others to the banquet of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The next hymn I picked because it was one of your centennial hymns, um, rooting through those boxes of stuff, 
I found the Centennial Bulletin along with the one of the Diamond Jubilee. And so um, Lift High the Cross was your main hymn that you sang about this time in the service that day. Please join us. Tell all the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, our King victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, our King Christ, the Son of God, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Who servants of the crucified, there on their brows the seal of him who died. Am I on their street? The cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred so shall our song of triumph ever be praise to the cross fight for victory lift high the cross the love of Christ proclaim Tell all the world adore his sacred name. I think I got lost in there. I had a tear in my eye, so sorry. Please stand as together with the whole Church of Christ we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church in all times and places of which this congregation and its buildings have been a part, gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. For the men and women who founded this congregation, who made personal sacrifices in order for it to grow and to flourish, and who used their talents and skills in building up a community of faith, gracious and faithful God, hear our prayer. 
for this congregation's ministries throughout its life, its gatherings for praise and prayer, its faithful use of the means of grace, and its study of the scriptures. Gracious and faithful God, for the work of mission this congregation has supported, especially for world hunger, Northeast Iowa Synod Lay School, Camp Iwalu, and for our local partners of ministry, including the Chickasaw County Food Pantry, the town of Alta Vista, the local and county VFW groups, plus many, many more, and for all the lives that have been affected by God's work through us. Gracious and faithful God. For this building that has sheltered Zion Lutheran Church for 137 years, that the memory of this place will continue to inspire devotion to the God who makes all things possible, gracious and faithful God. For all who hold special attachments to this congregation, for those who have been baptized, nurtured in faith, confirmed, or married in this place, that the Holy Spirit's gifts continue to sustain them even as the congregation's outward expression comes to a conclusion. Gracious and faithful God. For the members of this congregation who will continue gathering as a people of God in other communities of faith, that today will mark not only the end of an era, but also the beginning of new opportunities for worship and service. Gracious and faithful God. For the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Northeastern Iowa Synod, its present and past bishops, staff, and other leaders who have helped this congregation throughout the years and during these last few months preparing for closure, especially as they have led us to be faithful in our proclamation of the gospel. Gracious and faithful God. For all who have been a part of the ministry of this congregation throughout its life, those who have remained constant in the face of challenges, illnesses, surgeries, those who have moved away, and all who have died and now rest in you. We rejoice that we are joined together in one eternal communion. Gracious and faithful God, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The offering plate is located back by the door. You um, maybe saw that on your way in, and you have the, had the opportunity to contribute then. You also have the opportunity to contribute on the way out in case you didn't see it. Um, today's offering is going to be sent to the Northeastern Iowa Synod Lay Ministry Training. So anything that we gather from the plate will go there to help um, that program that's beginning hopefully this fall to help members of congregations provide people to go through the training and be able to fill in on a Sunday when the pastor needs to have a break and get away or for whatever reason the pastor needs to be gone and someone can then step in and have the training to do that. So we, we thank you for what you have are able to contribute. I'm going to let you sit for a minute or two or three. Um, as we get ready to sing this next hymn, it's very special to me, but it's also very special to many people. I um, just wanted to give you a little thought of why I stuck it in here during today's service. Life is a journey. Sometimes we've been using this concept of being in a journey a little bit too much maybe lately, but life is full of ups and downs, twists and turns, exhilarations and disappointments. And the author of this hymn reflects that reality of life. Verse 1 begins by seeking to sing the word to the world about Jesus, which is what we're commissioned to do. We're, we're to talk about Jesus, and we get to sing to the world about Jesus. Verse 2 tells us of praising Jesus. Sometimes that's easy to do, but sometimes it's not. We get to do that in verse 2. Verse 3 encourages us to remember to be servants. Jesus showed us how to be a servant. He washed the feet of his disciples. He showed us how. We need to be that, just like he was as our example. And verse 4 reminds us that God is with us always through our life. Whether our life 
goes askew for a while or whatever happens doesn't matter. God loves us no matter what. So let us sing, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song, number 808. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you wherever I go. You alone are our life and our peace and our love. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all of my joy be a faithful reflection of you. The earth and the sea and the sky join my song. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant to carry and to share all your burdens and tears. For you saved me by giving your body and blood. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps on my side, and with all of the family you saved by your love, we'll sing to your dawn the end of our journey. We continue on page 144 with the great thanksgiving. Oh, and it's noon. Let's wait for the siren to quit, Lindsay. It's going to ring again at 1 o'clock, so we hopefully are done by then. Okay. And please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away the sin of our, take away our sin, who died, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and the sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, 
praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered now into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and come forward as directed by the ushers. This is the table of the Lord. All of you who are attending today's service are welcome to the table. Gluten-free bread is what will be served here in the middle by the bishop, and then you may go apart to, don't go too far, guys. They want to dip their finger in there as they come forward. There you go. Um, each tray uh, on the outside, as you go to get your cups, um, you will find that there's grape juice in the middle row. So the other rows, of course, around that is wine. If you desire to receive, come to the bishop with your hands open so that you may receive the bread. If you, receive, re if you instead would rather receive only a blessing, come with your hands folded and he will know that that's what also you prefer. If anyone cannot come forward, please make sure that either Don or Brad know that you want to remain seated, and we will come to you when all the others are done and finished. I think that's all the instructions I need. Hopefully, anyway. All right. Richard. Make two rows.
blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Blood of Christ shed for you. Wiggle, wiggle. Blood of Christ shed for you. No, you've got a blood. blood of Christ shed for you. Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Just slide in. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Mom, if they turn you back there, that's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The blood of Christ shed for you. Wiggle. Blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. You can sit with Sarah if you want to. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. 
blood of Christ shed for you. She's the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. So the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let us pray. Gracious God, at your table, you strengthen us for service wherever you will lead us and send us. As we leave this place that has been a home for our worship and our mission, help us to gather in our new places of worship that will provide further opportunities for our life and ministry. Welcome us forever into your embrace until that day when all your people throughout the world worship together throughout and around the throne of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, Don and Michelle and Richard. You get the heavy one, or one of you does. In remembrance and with thanksgiving, we hand over the documented history and official records that symbolize the joys and sorrows of the people of God in this place. Reserve, receive and preserve them so that the ministry of this congregation may be remembered. Because the totes and records and legal documents are many, we have chosen these books to, as official minutes and treasury records to signify the transfer of records. All the records will be taken to the archive for our synod, which is located at Wartburg Theological Seminary. The official transfer of congregational assets will take place once all have been counted and reconciled with the bank statements. And you may now present them to the bishop. And we thank you. <clears throat> it is also our privilege at this time, I want to say a few thank yous. Probably maybe a weird thing to do, but I think it's appropriate. We want to thank Bishop Kevin Jones for preaching today and bringing us the good news of the gospel. We thank you and the Synod staff, me especially, I thank you, for providing support during this time as we prepared for closure. I want to thank you also to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Um, in fact, my sister and her granddaughter came. Oh, there they are. Um, they are members of St. Paul's Maple Leaf Lutheran Church. They will be purchasing our hymn books. 
and the statue of Jesus so that they have a new home. We know that they're going to a good place. And then I want to, this is a surprise. I don't think anybody knows this. I want to thank Lindsay for playing the organ because it's been a privilege of mine to sing as she plays, sharing her talent to provide the music for our worship. We ask that God strengthen and bless her, who through the gift of music was able to enliven our praises, give us new awareness of God's beauty and grace, and join our voices together as a choir, and also she keeps me on track. Lindsay, I have a gift for you to say thank you. Come on, you can get it. Thank you. I know. I know. She's the one that keeps me on track, even though you don't think so. She really does. Okay, I think I'm done with that. Okay. Whoop, wait a minute. They're waving a finger. I'd like to have the uh, You got to talk into this so they can hear you. Well, for uh, many years, this was a church council. Uh, I was the president, Tony Zapp was the vice president, Brad Lutton was the treasurer, and uh, Lee and Gordon uh, the Gunderson. was the uh, secretary, and Michelle Hunter was the uh, member of the council. Anyway, as a council, we like to present some cigars with uh, a wind chime. Cool. Yeah. And then Lindsay, we have a wind chime for you too. Should we flip for green or blue? <laughs> and I'd like to thank everybody for coming today uh, over here. Uh, we will have a Thank you. Can you tell he doesn't like to talk in front of people? Such a silly guy. All right, I think we're up to your part, Bishop. Okay. <clears throat> With thanks to God for the amazing work and ministry accomplished in this place, I declare the Congregational Ministry of Zion Lutheran of Alta Vista to be completed and the church to be closed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the witness of the people who have ministered in the name of Jesus Christ through Zion Lutheran Church be undiminished and continue as you leave this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you. There's a special blessing that's written for Closure Day, Holy Closure. So if you would, let's see, what do we got left? Just the procession. Well, I'll let you remain seated for the blessing, and then I'll let you stand up in a little bit. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Ringing the bell for the number of years of existence is a very symbolic and meaningful action for people in attendance to assist you in your departure of the building and the disillusion of the congregation. If you would like to participate in this, and I know that there's probably a whole bunch of you, we're going to have you line up on this north aisle. But also during this last hymn, as we leave this part of the worship, 
I'd also like, if any of you would like to maybe just go down and hang out for a bit and then come back later in a few minutes to get your order of time to ring the bell, if you could grab a hymnal or two and help us by taking them down and laying them on the table in the narthex, it would be very appreciated. And if Don and maybe Richard or Michelle would like to help and take anything from here out as well, we, we could call it the grand recession of all time. And then we're inviting you to eat lunch with us downstairs. And all of you are welcome to be there. And because of that, we don't want you to have to wait for us up here who are maybe messing around doing weird things. Um, so we're going to sing the table, Grace. And then Verna wants to come up and take a picture. And then we're going to start the last hymn. Sound like a plan? Okay. So I invite you to join me the, in singing the table prayer with the ending line, May strengthened for thy service be. <clears throat> be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may strengthen for thy service. Amen. And a photo? All right. You and I have to go out to get in the photo. Yep. Shall we sit down? Which pew do no. you like? Right. I'm going to sit by my husband. You do that. Make sure you can see the camera. <laughs> yep. Yes, you can go up in the pulpit, and then Lindsay can come down and sit down here. <laughs> Not unless you join her. Then it wouldn't be a solo. Well, that's true. All right. Give you time to get back to your spot. All right. Are you ready to sing? Stand up. Either grab a hymnal and go out or stand in line after the last verse. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day your has come. Henceforth in the fields of conquest, tents will be your home. Through days of preparation, faith in this kind of strong. And, and now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease. And holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor the roll of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with fears. For gladness breaks like morning, 
whatever your face appears, your cross is lifted o'er us. We journey in His sight. The crown awaits our conquest. Lead on, O God of might. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Well done. Thanks. I only cried once. So, yeah, I'm so sorry. I've been thinking about you all week. We had a prayer. We included you in our prayers today. Thank you. Thanks. Are you still walking at chairs? Are you still yeah, yeah. Now? You yeah, bet. We're in the, we're in the process dead. right now. No, I can only imagine, so we're getting closer. Okay. All right. Let me know. Thanks, we gotta thanks get, for being here. we got to get yeah. some out if we're going to do that. Yep. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. 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 Well, afternoon, I guess, technically, isn't it? Hey. Hello. Thanks for coming. Well, so, thanks for being here. My manual people. Oh, wow, you carry a camera on Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 I think, I think Kevin would love to do that. The other Kevin. Hey, you. How are you? How are you? I'm well. How are you? Grandma taking I saw care you care? last Monday at Mika's funeral. Oh, yeah. That's where I belong. Okay, well, yeah. thanks for coming here today. Yes, the master's gone down to the. Yep, he's down. That'll be good, I think, for him. Yep. She did. Yep. It will. We'll we'll keep we'll look after him if you do too. Good. Good to see you. Thank you. You bet. You want? Want to ring the bell? Hello. You know, I've gone 16 years without ringing it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's fun. Hi, Thank you for coming. Um, yep. My dad was sitting Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are you looking to get up on yours? Hi, come on, Charlie. You can stand up for yourself. And you tied us up. You behave yourself once in a while. Stop looking on your brother. <laughs> Never once. No. How are you? So was his sermon short enough or not? Oh. <laughs> the Just the rest of it is kind of a pain. Huh? No, sometimes it's good to be reminded. <laughs> right? Thank you. Good job, Bob. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have to write you an article this week. I think so, too. I'm on the list. The trip Thanks. Do you want to shake my hand? <laughs> you look like you're full. These Thank you. Heavy. They are. They're heavier than you think, right? Yeah. Good morning. Uh, going, Where's the bulletin? Oh, there they are. They're on the couch. My daughter Sarah brought them. Thank you for helping out. Yeah, they go down there. Okay. Somewhere they'll hit table. Oh, 
six. <laughs> no, not five. Right. Thank you. All right. I need to finish it in my day. No. You can? Really? I doubt that. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'll be out there. Yeah. And I'll come visit. Yeah. And I'll come visit. I'll come visit. It may not be your official pastor, but I can still visit. You're a friend, you know. He's a nice friend. He is a nice friend. Oh, here comes Brown. We've got to get out of the way. Yep. Hey, come back. Right away. Yep. I'm well, how are you? Good. It is. It is. It's, it, it is really hard. So. Yeah, this is my granddaughter. Yep. 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 A bit like a funeral. Yeah. It really is. We haven't had very many. Yeah. I think it was one of our dads. Baby Heather, I would not blink away, and I'm like, I don't remember what verse was on. I used to keep back up my shoes. You know, it's funny when you start out with what can go wrong, just go wrong. Oh, yeah. Everything went wrong. I got my daughter still lives in Mexico City and drove them all over. Uh-oh. <laughs> it was good to have you here. Mm, good to have you back. Good to have you here. Hey, thank you. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's good that someone reminds you. Keep it short, Pastor. Well, yeah. Lynn, thanks. Oh, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You want? There you go. You didn't know the ringing of the bell. There you go. You want? Thank you. Get in on the ringing. They only have to do it 137 times. So, hello. Hey, thanks for coming. Those are nice. Uh, oh, those are nice. Yeah. I like those deep tones. We're at Warburg, though, so they might be able to find. Well, they could find maybe find this They could maybe find a drum somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've gone into the, the New Horizons band. I'm the symbol drum. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. Call uh, uh, Pastor Dave at St. Paul's. I shall do that. You, they may be able to find some. Okay. Right. So I was going to take a picture of that yep. before you take it apart. Yeah. Like Would you like me to stay for lunch? Oh, you'd like to? Oh, Otherwise, I was going to leave that. Oh, okay. I would like to go to Always good at Hope so. When you get to speed, you get here, I know. A little bit? But like normal speed. Oh, no. Love you, too.